Afternoon, friends. Today is April the 12th, and I want to share some of God's Word with you. And then after that, I want to tell you some information about the, uh, the mother and the three children who lost everything they own in a fire. And it just literally burned uh, their small trailer down to the ground and they've lost everything and I just got off the phone with her about 30 minutes ago and and I just want to share something with you and to help us remember the heart of our Heavenly Father as expressed through Jesus and uh, if you would turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 25 and starting at verse 31 it says when the son of man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him then he will sit on the throne of his glory and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. He will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Because I was hungry and you gave me some food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry? <laughs> they, they're probably thinking, Lord, when did we see you? When did we feed you? Or when was you thirsty and we gave you something to drink? Lord, when did we see you as a stranger and we took you in? Or naked and clothed you? When did we see you sick? And when did we see you in prison and we came to you? Listen to this carefully. And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Now, there's no need for me to read anymore because we know the rest of the story. The others that didn't do that, they were the goats. Friend, we have people every day that are strangers. And we walk right by them and they remain strangers. We have people that are hungry, destitute, outcast, and we walk by them and they remain hungry, thirsty, destitute, and outcast. You have to, let me rephrase this, to be, to be one of the sheep, you have to put forth an effort. You have to, what they call, reach out. How many times have you asked about somebody and they say, oh, thank you for reaching out to me. See, my goodness, I got a double chin. Lord, that thing bothers me. Praise God, I got to get rid of that. But seriously, <laughs> Lord, let me, oh, God help me. Anyway, I'm joking. That's the flesh, folks. I'm just messing with you. That, that really don't bother me. But I did that as an example. You see? That's the flesh. And if you worry about the flesh, you can't 
get into the spirit as long as you worry about is does my hair look right? How do I look on camera? You know, you know, is is my shirt straight? That's all flesh. See, you're worried about what people think about you, and as long as you worry what people think about you, your focus is guess what? Your focus is on you. If you are worried about whether your hair looks good or whether you got a double chin or whether, you know, oh, did I shave? Is my shirt? You know, the same examples I just gave. All the focus is on you. And as long as the focus is on you, you'll never focus on them. Because, see, you got to take your eyes off of yourself and put your eyes on someone else. Because when you quit looking at if your hair is okay and if your clothes is okay, then you will start looking at them and say, is their hair okay? Is their clothes okay? Do they have socks and shoes? Are they hungry? See, we got to get our eyes off of ourselves and put our eyes on someone else. I'm going to say that again. You have to get your eyes off of yourself before you can put your eyes on someone else. And like the video I did a few days ago, we are to care about others more than we care about ourselves. That's the heart of God. That's the heart of God. Friend, that is the heart of God. I want you to listen to this. <laughs> when the Holy Ghost shows you things, it's amazing. As I'm talking, the Holy Ghost showed me the Father and Jesus in heaven. They had everything at their disposal. He's the creator. But there was something he didn't have. The Father did not have mankind redeemed. He's God. He's God. But mankind, he didn't have redeemed. I hope to God, I hope to the Lord, he is giving you revelation, knowledge, and understanding about what I just said that the Holy Spirit was showing me. Even though he's God, he had everything but one thing. Mankind was not redeemed. So Jesus had to care about us more than himself. Jesus had to care about us more than he did his throne. Jesus had to care about us more than he did sitting at the right hand of the Father. Jesus had to care about us more than he did his glory. And Jesus had to care about us more than he did in worrying about the pain he would go through. That is where when you care about others more than you do yourself, that is the heart of God. For God the Father... Love the Lord, excuse me, for God the Father. Oh, he loved the Lord. For God the Father loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. God the Father took the word 
and put the word into the earth. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory. God the Father cared more about us as a lost human race, lost mankind, more than he did giving his son up for us. And when the scripture says that we need to care about others more than us, it means that. If you will go to James, I'm going to read this, and then we're going to move on, and then we're going to just end this video. If you will go to James, let me find it. Was it James? I thought it was. Let me see here. Huh. Well, I knew I should have marked it. Anyway, I, I had my, my finger on it. And um, anyway, you know the scripture. It says, um, I thought for sure it was James 2. Well, praise God. And I don't even have my glasses glasses on. That's part of the problem. If I had my glasses on, <laughs> uh, this would, would be a lot more focused. Anyway, um, you know what the scripture says. Where Paul was saying that the body without the spirit is dead, even so um, faith without works is dead. And Paul said this, he said, you show me your faith in God without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Now, listen to what I'm about to say very carefully. There's this once saved, always saved teaching. Hear me carefully. Listen to what I'm saying and don't misunderstand because if you do, you're going to run off saying something that I didn't say. In the once saved, always saved, there is a group of people that want to say we do not, we're not saved by works, lest any man should boast. Okay, that's true. We're not saved by works, lest any man should boast. Okay, now listen carefully. That doesn't say not to work, but there's a group of people that want to use that scripture as a excuse as to not work. In other words, we're saved, once saved, always saved, saved by the grace of God. I'm going to fold my hands and not work because if I work, I'm afraid that I'm trying to earn my salvation. You must understand something. Jesus in his or out of his own mouth, with his own word said, told those disciples, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works will you do because I go to the Father. Jesus did great works, but it wasn't for him to try to earn his salvation. Jesus did not need salvation. Jesus is God. Those men, when Jesus was teaching them to work, 
and to do the works of God. They were not doing those works to earn salvation. They did those works because it was commanded to work. They were told to work. But now in 2017, we want to say, oh, God don't want us to work because we're trying to earn our salvation. No, you're not. You're not trying to earn salvation. You are trying to be obedient to God. You're trying to be obedient to God's, man, I got my, I got my dividers flying all over the place. I thought it was snowing here for a second. Praise God. Anyway, of course, you know, I didn't. That's being funny. But being obedient to God's word. God's word tells us things to do, things to get accomplished. Those are works, my friend. And you're not doing them to earn your salvation. You're doing them to be obedient and to be a blessing on someone else. You want to be a blessing to others. You are the hands of God. You're the mouth of God. You're the eyes of God. You're the ear. Do you realize that we are the body of Christ? And we're members individually, but together we make up the body of Christ. And if there was anything, the body of Christ was not lazy. Nor did the body of Christ sit around and do nothing. It went out, his body, meaning his physical body, did works did make great and mighty things. Now we are the body of Christ and members individually and members in particular. So, do not allow Satan to trick you into condemnation that when you try to do works, don't let him say, oh, you're just trying to earn your salvation. No. No. You have your salvation sealed through the Holy Spirit. But what you are trying to do, you're trying to get the gospel of the kingdom to another person. And that takes works. Whether it's talking it, singing it, showing acts of kindness, it's works. If you do works that are approved unto God, and when they're judged, they will remain, and you will receive an award, a reward. An award. You will receive a reward. But if you do works of the flesh that do not uh, further the kingdom of Christ, when it goes through the judgment of fire, it, they will be burned up. And you will suffer loss, but yet you will be saved. Yet so as by fire, the Bible says. So, I've got some works for us to do, okay? Now, let me say this right here. I've got information to share with you. Then I'm going to end this video. Okay. First, I want you to know that later on today, around between 8 and 8.30, Pastor Charles Starling, better known as Mickey, and myself will both go on Facebook Live. Okay? Now, and the point of that is we want to let as many people know about what we're trying to do for this mother and her three children. Now, we've already had a very good response so far. I talked to her. Tomorrow morning, she's going to be, uh, she's got someone that has offered them a place to stay. So she's going tomorrow morning to see about staying there. So around 1 o'clock, I will be in Madison giving them I'm going to be bringing them uh, Easter baskets, um, water, snacks, uh, money, checks, 
and a whole lot of love, care, and concern. Now, but the folks that are living in and around Madison, Florida, Madison, uh, Greenville, Lee, Florida, uh, Hanson, Cherry Lake, I want you, dear children of God, to meet us at the Four Freedoms Park. Four Freedoms Park. And, which is in the center of town. And we're going to meet there at 1 o'clock. And what I would suggest is if you have stuff like lamps or maybe like a, a, a small bookcase or something like that. If you have something that's like furniture type, I would suggest take a picture of it with your phone, bring it there, and just show her. Say, could you use these lamps? Uh, and she may say, well, the, the person before you just gave me the two lamps sitting over there, so I appreciate the offer, but I've already got me some lamps. You know, I wouldn't suggest hauling furniture down there. You can take pictures of what you want to offer her that's kind of bulky. You know, even if it's like a, a big toy or something, uh, take pictures of it and say, hey, would your little boy like this? Would your girls like this? And go from there. And y'all can exchange contact information. And when she gets set up in her new place, uh, whether it's a little apartment or whatever, or a, another um, little home, uh, you know, y'all can exchange and get her back on her feet because that's what we're wanting to do. We want to get this dear lady and her children where they can lay their head down at night <laughs> and feel secure, not sleeping in a strange, small hotel room. Please. She's got three children. And their ages is 3, 11, and 13. Imagine being a mom with three children. Staying, having to stay in a, in, a, in, a, in a hotel room. Oh, my goodness. You know, I just say we need to help them. And we do that because we love them. But you ought to do that also just to show your appreciation that, A, God's blessed you to the point you can do this, and that thank God that it hasn't happened to you. Like I told Mickey, I said, if that happened to me and my friends who tell me they love me, if they didn't do anything to help me and my family out, I would be devastated. Because, you know, it's easy to say, hey, I love y'all. I love you. And I love you, and I love you. Love really is shown when someone's in need. See, to say, I love you, that's easy. But when you get in a vehicle and you drive out of your way to drop off a check, that is how you show love. And that happens today. When you understand the need and you realize that there's, you know, you're, you're on a tight budget, like we all are, but you realize, you know what, tonight I'm going to lay down in my bed. Tonight I'm going to set the air conditioner on my wall. I'm going to go to my refrigerator and get me a glass of tea. I'm going to go outside and get the mail tomorrow at my house. I'm going to turn on the ceiling fan in my house. I'm going to reach over there and grab my Bible to read it in my house. We ought to thank God that these things that we take for granted, we still have. These four precious people can't go to their refrigerator. It's gone. They can't go to their closet and get out some clothes they want to wear. 
They're gone. They can't go into the bedroom, the kids, and play with their toys because they're gone. Friend, in a matter of an hour, most likely, they went from having possessions to having nothing. That right there ought to motivate. Motiv motivate. That's a good word. <laughs> that shows you I'm still tired. And um, don't pick on me too hard, sister. <laughs> she was fussing at me earlier. Um, that should motivate us to want to show them love. Extend effort towards them. On top of that, <laughs> praise God. Do you realize that when we stand before our Heavenly Father, He's going to say, on April the 13th, it's recorded in the works. It's recorded in the books of heaven. Everything we said and done in our body, it will be recorded that this sweet friend came by my home and dropped off a check. That will be recorded in heaven. Well, it's already recorded. This will be showed back to her. She's got a reward waiting for her. She did an act of kindness. Each one of you today that has said, Brother Asa, I cannot give right now. I, I'm just tired. And, and I understand the post that I made was not to make you or to make you feel pressure to give. I put that out there so that A, the opportunity is there, and B, mainly to share it. Because, see, if I share it with you, and then you share it on your Facebook page, and someone sees it and shares it on their Facebook page, boom, 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 there might be a person over here that the Lord wants them to write a check or to send a substantial amount of money back to this family. But you have to share it. You have to share it. So, it ain't that I'm, I'm, I'm saying here, donate. I'm saying here, take this, pray for them, and move it on. Keep it moving down the line. If I send this to 100 people, and those 100 people send it to 100 people, well, I would need a calculator for that, and then you take them 100, which 100 times 100 is what, 10,000? You take that and send it to uh, another hundred. Now what, you up to, I don't know, hundred, hundred thousand? That many people could get this information. And we'd say, well, we got enough. Thank you, but we, we have this dear family situated. And, and like I told her, I said, I, wanna, I want us to be able to help you until you are comfortable in your new place. And you know, somebody, bless her heart, somebody put on a comment. Well, there's so many people out there hurting. That, that is, that is the God honest truth. But you know what? You have to deal with the little piece of pie that God puts in your path. It's like when I'm out driving around in my gospel mercury. That's what I call it, my gospel mercury, 92 gospel mercury. And I see somebody walking or someone that looks like they, they could use something, and I stop and give them the, the love letter and give them, you know, um, a coupon for uh, King's Grill. And, of course, you know, if they said, well, sir, I appreciate that, but, you know, I could really use a pair of shoes also. I, I would go right down there and give them a pair of shoes. I've already got that set up at a, at a, a clothing store. The, I've got that in place. 
So anybody I ever see or someone requests that, it's set up. But that's what we're to do. You know? But but this person said, you know, well, everybody's out there hurting. That's true. But that doesn't mean just because so many people is hurting doesn't mean that you shouldn't help one family. You know, it's one thing to, well, you know, a tree fell on my car, and now I need a car. Okay, that's bad. But when your house burns down, and you have nowhere to live, that's worse. So, to wrap that train of thought up, it says, God directs our paths every day, considering our steps and when God puts someone in front of you a person a family or a situation that's the reason why this book right here says to be ready in season and out of season we must always be ready and I'm just going to flat tell you I cannot wait till this radio station is up broadcasting and where I go, and I, and I believe this is going to happen, where I go from 4,000 YouTube subscribers to 10,000, to 15,000, to 20,000. Friend, if there's anything I am, in my, most of my whole life I've been in retail management. Having to keep up with, with books, having to keep up with PL statements, um, you know, controllable, non controllable expenses. If there's anything I'm good at, my wife will attest to this it is taking care of business. Taking care of business to where I know how much is coming in, I know how much is going out, and I keep good records. Right now, as I'm sitting here in my or on my couch in my living room, I have got a book in there, and I can show anyone every dollar that has been given to the Million for Christ ministry, whether it was given for the street ministry, whether it was given for the uh, Christian radio station. Or whether it was given to be used as I saw fit. It's all in there. And let me tell you this. The money that was given was has not been used to put gas in my car. The money was not has not been used to pay my light bill. I have a full-time job. My wife has a full-time job. And we make enough to make ends meet. You see, I know that I have to stand before God and give an account of everything said and done in my body. That includes what comes into this ministry and how it's used. And I've already told y'all, I sent y'all an email. Those who have given I stated that, you know, that I would share with you the amount of money that's been received and where it's been sent. Anyone that has given to this ministry, if you said, Asa, send me a PDF or send me a screenshot of where the monies went, I, I would do that and would not hesitate at all. But if you're some troll that A, just watch the video so that you can make some mean, crazy comment, I, I'm not going to share anything like that with you because you're not a part of this ministry. You're just someone that watches the videos. Those who are really part of this Million for Christ Ministries, you do more than just watch the video. This ain't a TV show. This isn't Lucy 
This isn't Lassie, and this isn't Gunsmoke. This isn't the, what's that movie or show called, The uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? You know? Th this isn't for entertainment. You know, I pick on him, but I like him. I pick on him, but I like him. Paul Bailey. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, he's funny. And, you know, they say I'm kind of funny too, but, but I mean, he's funny. You know, you mash that play button, and first thing he says, What? Are you serious? Calm down, everybody. Get a cup of coffee. You know, that's how it sounds. What? Are you serious? I mean, calm down. Calm down. You know? And, and people like that. They say, oh, that's a funny man. I want to subscribe. And because they know every time they hit the play button, he's going to say, what? Are you serious? Calm down. Get a cup of coffee. Oh, I like him too. Su subscribe. 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 But when you watch my channel, I don't do that. You know, the only thing I do that one or two people said they like is where I said, good morning, friends. And then after that, sometimes I don't even know what God's going to speak through me. And it's not about popularity. It's not about popularity. It is about being a minister that walks in the anointing of God, that strives to walk in God's will. It's not funny. It's not to be joked about. It's like the two men. Was it Peter? Went up to the man and said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He reached down and grabbed him, and the man leaped and was made whole. Friend, I would rather be that kind of a minister with 4,000 subscribers any day than to be a funny, like I said, I am not putting this man down. Paul Begley, if you ever even watch this, seriously, Brother Paul, if you watch this, understand I am not putting you down. I have watched you and been subscribed to you from the first day you said, What? Are you serious? I said, Man, that's funny. I did the same thing like everybody else subscribed to you. So, I know there's people that don't like you. I like you. Um, and I watch you almost every single day. So, I am not. I want to go on record. Asa Pittman with Millions for Christ is not putting down Brother Paul Beckley. He is a preacher. He's a minister. He's an evangelist. <laughs> a real one, too. And I say that to one of my dear sisters. <laughs> bless her heart. God bless you. And you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but let me say this. You and I, we are the hands of God, and we are to be out making a difference in people's lives. Like I said 30 minutes ago, when I was playing with my little chin, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> If you got your eyes on you, you'll never put your eyes on someone else. If all you care about is you, you'll never care about them. But let me tell you something. You want to touch God's heart? You take your eyes off of yourself. And you put your eyes on someone else. Take your eyes off yourself. 
and put it on someone else. And let me tell you this. That's when God gets serious and gets active in your life. Because, see, as long as you're taking care of yourself, you don't need much of a move of God. Think about it. As long as you are catering to yourself, taking care of yourself, God don't have to move very body in your life. But when you take your eyes off of yourself, praise God, listen carefully. Listen carefully. When you take your eyes off of yourself and put your eyes on someone else, that's when God begins to take care of you. You get it? Because when you abandon yourself to take care of someone else, while you are ministering, to someone else, you've abandoned yourself. You're, you're caring about them. You're wanting to help them. And you forget about your needs because you're taking care of those, their needs. And while you're taking care of their needs, God, my friend, is taking care of your needs. That will just make you scream. God's taking care of you so you can take care of them. That's when the mighty power of God works. When you abandon yourself and take care of somebody else. And while you're taking care of your, someone else, you come back and you look and say, my goodness, my bills are paid. Oh yeah, honey, we got a rebate check from somebody for $3,000. I went ahead and paid all the bills off. Who did it come from? I don't know. Or you're just so busy helping somebody else. And then all of a sudden, you find out, you go to your account, look, and you get this little note. Brother, Brother Asa, Sister Susie, whoever. The Lord, as I was watching your video and you were just showing love, the Lord told me to give you $100. The Lord laid it on my heart to give you $10. Well, I didn't ask for it. The Lord. And see, there's going to come a time. And you know what? Let me say this. We, we, we are so looking for Jesus to come back. We are so looking for Jesus to come back. And he may very well come back any day now. Any day, but I'm gonna tell you what, if Jesus was to come back tomorrow, I would much rather be in Madison, Florida, helping a, 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 a mama with three precious children down there, filming, giving her money, giving her toys, and the trumpet sounds, and we all go to heaven, than me be over here in Valdosta, Georgia. Sitting around doing nothing. Let me tell you. We, as children of God, called into the ministry of reconciliation. We need to get our eyes off of ourselves, Get our eyes on someone else. And get busy for the kingdom. And while we are taking care of others, our Lord and Savior is taking care of us. And when the trumpet sounds, we go to heaven doing great deeds and acts of kindness. Just because Jesus is coming back is not a reason to sit down and do nothing. That, that ought to be the time to get up. Let me ask you this. You're expecting your friends to come over. You ain't seen them in a long time. The day that you think they're coming, you don't sit on the it, you don't sit and watch TV. You hear a car go by. Oh, there's a car. So you jump up and run to the window. You're looking. 
and you sit down a minute, you hear another car, you jump up, run to the window. Said, you know what? While I'm up, I might as well be doing something. I might as well be doing something productive. They'll show up when they're ready to show up. That's how we got to be with the Lord's return. We hear and we see the signs. We need to jump up, run to the window, and be expectant of his return. And while we are, are, while we are up, we need to say, let's do something productive. Because the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let's do something productive. Do you, I mean, I'm not mad. I'm excited. I mean, praise God. This ain't upset. This is exciting. You know, my son says sometimes, Daddy, why are you mad? I said, son, I'm not mad. I'm, ex I'm stoked. I'm excited or whatever you want to call it. I mean, let's get all excited and tell somebody that Jesus Christ is coming. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. And the way you, the way that you really get people to believe that he's coming soon is you go do something for him. You do something. You, you want to redeem the last few seconds of time. You should, you should, just like in a football game that we love watching, you know, love watching them games. That last few seconds, you got to lay it all out on the field, especially if the score is tied. Praise God, you better lay it all out on the field. You better lay it all out on the field. Get on Team Jesus' side. That's right. Get Grouped up with Team Jesus. We are mighty soldiers of God. We are not to entangle ourselves with the affairs of this life. We are to come out from among the world and be separate and be full of the Holy Ghost of God. Where God is a fire inside of you. Let me tell you something. Mark this down. The Holy Ghost. I'm telling you what, his presence, I have never felt in me and on me and through me as strong as I have in 2017. I'm telling you, God is close. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is right there at the cloud, people. I mean, he's here. He, I, mean, I believe he is just at the point of the trumpet sounding, and the Holy Spirit here is stirring up our hearts for the love of God and for the love of the lost. The Holy Spirit is just stirring in our hearts. And it's exciting. It's exciting. You know, we're going to win. We're going to win. We're The game's almost over. We are ahead. We're going to win. The minute that hand hits zero and the trumpet sounds we're all going to throw up our hands and cheer because praise God we have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb the trumpet sounds we're going to be snatched out of this earth and those people for their whole lives who said no people are crazy that's not going to happen. Let me tell you something. You see this book right here? This book says that the city of Damascus would be left a ruinous heap. Go look it up. It happened. This book right here said that there would come a day that they would put a mark in your right hand or forehead. You won't be able to buy or sell. Friend, they're taking the chip right in their hand. Or just anywhere. But that, ain't, that don't mean that's necessarily the mark. But they're going to use that chip to track you. They're going to use that chip, like the chip in your credit card. Instead of that information being on that chip, it's going to be in this chip. Anyway, we are about to leave, my friend.
And, and I'm going to have to hurry with this video because I'm about to hit the one hour mark. And I still got some things to tell you. Which, of course, what I'm about to tell you here, we're going to talk about with Brother Mickey live, Facebook, at the church, the Father's house, the Outreach Center. Anyway, if you really believe, if you really believe that Jesus is about to come back, I want to tell you this. There is a dear child of God. I'm not going to tell you whether male or female. There is a dear child of God that is so believing and faith-driven that the Lord Jesus Christ is about to come back any day now. This person has went, got away from their career and went into a ministry where they can get closer to God, draw nigh unto God, and they're in a position that they can do that financially. They're in a position. And you know what? That's something. This person realizes, okay, I got so much money. I don't need to keep working until the day the trumpet sounds. I, it's time for me to take my resources and go into ministry and helping others, sharing the gospel, helping other ministries, and drawing nigh to God, drawing close to the Lord. Do you realize that there is People, I promise you, there are people right now that will watch this video that if they quit working today with the amount of money they got either in CDs, uh, real estate, homes, rental property, the assets they've got could, could take them another 10 years easy. But you know what? We ain't going to do that. We're going to keep working and keep working and keep working. I'm going to tell you. And, and I'm not even worried about it because I know that 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 before the rapture happens, I know. I'm telling you, I know. <laughs> and I'm saying that also gets me excited. I know. My days of working are numbered. Oh, yes. I know this. My days of, of, of going to work, spending 40-something hours a week at work, when I could be spending those 40 hours teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, where people are hearing the gospel, where I am out on the streets in a more active role, sharing the gospel with stranger after stranger after stranger. The days of that are coming. I'm telling you, I know that I know that I know. How God brings it to pass, I don't know. I may wake up one day and a little dog walks up, drags a, a old brown bag up to my front door. Might have money in it. <laughs> you better believe I'm going to make sure that uh, take it down to the police department make sure it ain't stolen money. Last thing I want to do is get caught with something like that. But that's just an example. But the same way that God provided manna to the children of Israel, I'm telling you I know that I know that I know that I know that the path that I am on right now, God is moving me into a full-time ministry. And it ain't no ministry to have a better car because the car that I got, I'm gonna, I am going to make you think I'm lying to you. I drive a 92 Mercury Marquis. You couldn't give me a better car. You could give me a newer car. You could give me a car that registers more than 85 miles an hour. But you can't give me a better car.
Because let me tell you, that car cranks every time. It has not let me down. Ice cold air conditioning. Rise like a champ, just as comfortable as it can be. And you know what? It is the colors scheme that I wanted. It's white with that beautiful plush blue interior. Now, albeit I did have to put a CD player in it because the the radio that came with it, the cassette player or whatever, that thing, that that had to go. So I went down to Walmart and about eighty nine dollars, I think it eighty eight, eighty nine or something. Put a little CD player in there. That's, that's all it needed. Like I was telling Brother Robert yesterday, I have driven. Now, now I know you're going to say, okay, well, he's running down a rabbit trail. Well, let me tell you about a rabbit trail. Because everything I say, I share with you as a teaching and a way to let you understand how to back away from your life and look at the real purpose of life and get in tune with God. Like I was telling uh, Pastor Robert yesterday. You see, friend, it don't matter. And please listen, I pray to God. It is the 56-minute mark. If you have listened to this point, Please, I promise you, please, I ask you, should I say, if you've listened to this point and you plan on listening to the remainder, please, in the comments, just put, I heard you, or I was there, you know, um, you know, just, uh, just put the word bells, you know, bells, we all love bells. But anyway, just give me a comment, because I want to say this, and I promise you, I will be ending this video. And what I'm going to do, um, I, I, I am going to go through this real quick, but I have to, I have to tell you this, friend, because if you don't get this, and if you don't change, you're not going to walk into the power of the Holy Spirit, because you can't, because you're so full of yourself. But listen, like I told Pastor Robert, it don't matter if you got one dollar or a million dollars. Do you love that dollar bill? Would you give that dollar bill away if that was the last dollar you got? Some people said, there ain't no way. I'm down to my last dollar. I sure ain't giving it away. Let's say you have a million dollars. Would you give that million dollars away? Some person might say, my goodness, no, it took me my whole life to get it. I would get some of it away. It's not the amount of money you have. It's the amount of attachment you have to your money. It's not a matter of what kind of car you, you drive. It's the amount of attachment you have to your car. Meaning this. If you cannot walk away from a possession and be totally happy, then that possession has got a hook in your heart. But if you have a possession where you could literally look at it and say, you know what, I literally could give this away or throw it away and would never miss it, and I could be just as happy. That possession does not have a hook in your heart. But if you have a possession where you said, if I lost this, I would be devastated. Friend, you need to get victory over that because it has got a hook in your heart. So, find ways to determine what has got a hook in your heart. Because we have to abandon ourselves to our possessions, and to our wants, so that we could give ourselves wholeheartedly unto the Lord. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Now, I'm going to go through this very quick. Like I said, 
the same information will be all that we talk about in these videos. Okay. Um, there's three children, 3, 11, and 13. The three-year-old, which is a, a boy, wears 4T clothes. Okay? The 11-year-old wears size 7 to 8 blue jeans and large tops, women's size. Uh, the oldest daughter wears zero to three women's size, I think, blouses or, or not blouses, I'm sorry, skirts or pants, zero to three women's size. And for the skirts, not pants, see, that just shows <laughs> the blouse or uh, blouses and shirts are, are small, okay? Now, for those that are close enough that you can drive, here's what I think you should bring or bring pictures of. They could use non-perishable foods. They could use food gift cards, toys, gift cards from Walmart, gift cards from Target, cards from Kohl's, Sears, Belks, just any of those places. Um, you could get them gift cards from a grocery store, you know, Publix or, well, like I said, Walmart or Ben dixie you know, and actually that would be a very safe way to give because if you give them cash, you know, someone can steal course their pocketbooks of the cash and so forth but anyway I think it would be really awesome if we brought you know clothes I gave the sizes non-perishable foods you know and, and just like you know um, these little sippies or what are they called the hugs or I can't the Capri Suns and stuff like that that you get cold and stick a straw in refreshments like that I think would be great for them. Um, toys, like I said, and, and so forth. So, friends, you show me your faith without your works, Paul said. And I will show you my faith by my works. You can bring glory and honor to the Father. Imagine what this dear sister's going to do when she's in her new place and her children dress in clothes that we helped her get. And she goes to church realizing my God meets my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God meets my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I don't have any needs. They do. You may not have any needs. They do. You may not can give. That's fine. Give them love. Lift them up before the Lord Jesus Christ. To bless them. To encourage them. Send me a comment to them. Or either go to my Facebook page. Put a comment there. Her name is Danielle. And that's pretty cool because my son's name's Daniel. But Danielle, send her a comment. Say, hi, Danielle. This is Renee. This is Larry. This is Tom. I just want you to know. We love you. We care about you. We're praying for you. I don't have anything I can send you this week, this month. But I should be able next month or, you know, just say, you know, we want to lift you up. Um, we have some things, some clothes that are the same size as your children. Uh, give us a mailing address and we'll send it to you. And I'm sure she can provide a mailing address. 
And there's ways. See, every time we give, we don't have to pull out of our hip pocket. You know, some people would rather have a smile from you than money. Some people would rather just have you be nice to them than give them something. Sometimes being nice is harder than giving money. You know, I'll give you, I'll give you a dollar, then I'll cuss you out. No, I ain't going to give you nothing. But I'll do my best to be a neighbor to you and I'll be nice to you. We can always give friends. The heart of the Father is to give. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He gave his only be He gave. He gave and he gave. Our God is a giver, not a taker. Our God is a giver, a blesser, a redeemer, a deliverer. And he's our friend. And our Savior. I am going to end this video right now. We are at 105.5 or 50. I've enjoyed sitting here talking to you, and I hope to the Lord Jesus Christ you, you have received an understanding of the heart of the Father and how we can be just like Him. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless each one of y'all.